The Monday demonstrations in East Germany in 1989–1991 German, Montagsdemonstrationen were a series of peaceful political protests against the government of the German Democratic Republic GDR that took place every Monday evening. Because the church played a big role in them, the Monday demonstrations are also sometimes called the religious protest. The protests that occurred between 1989 and 1991 can be separated into five cycles. The Monday demonstrations started in Leipzig and were spontaneous, meaning that the demonstrations were not planned beforehand. Overview In Leipzig the demonstrations began on 4 September 1989 after the weekly Friedensgebet prayer for peace in the St. Nicholas Church with Parson Christian Führer, and eventually filled the nearby Karl Marx Square today known again as Augustusplatz. Safe in the knowledge that the Lutheran Church supported their resistance, many dissatisfied East German citizens gathered in the court of the church, and nonviolent demonstrations began in order to demand rights such as the freedom to travel to foreign countries and to elect a democratic government. The location of the demonstration contributed to the success of the protests. Leipzig was freer than other cities such as Berlin, as there were no Stasi headquarters GDR secret police stationed there to stop the demonstrations. Leipzig also had the Leipziger Messe, the Leipzig Trade Fair, which allowed businessmen and media from West Germany to enter East Germany. Informed by West German television and friends about the events, people in other East German cities began replicating the Leipzig demonstrations, meeting at city squares on Monday evenings. A major turning point was created by the events in the West German Embassy of Prague at the time. Thousands of East Germans had fled there in September, living in conditions reminiscent of the Third World. Hans Dietrich Genscher had negotiated an agreement that allowed them to travel to the West, using trains that had to first pass through the GDR. Genscher's speech from the balcony was interrupted by a very emotional reaction to his announcement. When the trains passed Dresden's central station in early October, police had to stop people from trying to jump on. By 9 October 1989, just after the 40th anniversary celebrations of the GDR, the gatherings at the St. Nicholas Church that had begun with a few hundred had swollen to more than 70,000 out of the city's population of 500,000, all united in peaceful opposition to the regime. The most famous chant became, W.I.R. Sind das Volk. We are the people. Reminding the leaders of the GDR that a democratic republic has to be ruled by the people, not by an undemocratic party claiming to represent them. Although some demonstrators were arrested, the threat of large scale intervention by security forces never materialized as local leaders SED party leader Helmut Hackenberg and General Mahor Gerhard Strayenberg of the armed police, without precise orders from East Berlin and surprised by the unexpectedly high number of citizens, shied away from causing a possible massacre, ordering the retreat of their forces. Later, Egan Krenz claimed it was he who gave the order not to intervene. The next week, in Leipzig on 16 October 1989, 120,000 demonstrators turned up, with military units again being held on standby in the vicinity. Two days after the rally, Erich Honecker, the leader of the SED, was forced to resign. The week after, the number more than doubled to 320,000. This pressure and other key events eventually led to the fall of the Berlin Wall on 9 November 1989, marking the imminent end of the socialist GDR regime. The demonstrations eventually ended in March 1990, around the time of the first free multi-party elections for the Volkskammer parliament across the entire GDR. This paved the way to German reunification. Topic cycles of the Monday demonstrations first cycle the 25th of September 1989 to the 18th of December 1989 total of 13 protests second cycle the 8th of January 1990 to the 12th of March 1990 total of 10 protests third cycle the 10th of September 1990 to the 22nd of October 1990 total of 7 protests Fourth cycle, the 21st of January 1991 to the 18th of February 1991, total of five protests. Fifth cycle, the 4th of March 1991 to the 22nd of April 1991, total of seven protests. Topic: Role of the Church during the rule of the GDR. The Church was one of the only institutions that could retain their own autonomy and organize a group of people. However, it is important to note that the church did not organize or encourage the demonstrations, even though the demonstrations stemmed from the regular peace prayers held there. 
The Church simply acted on their ideology of work against injustice and oppression. As a result, the Church offered sanctuary to alternative political groups, the victims of the GDR rule. The Church also offered them financial aid, support from the congregation, and a place to communicate. Initially, the Church did not make statements about the GDR or anything politically related. However, by the middle of 1989, there was a politicization of the Church, politics started to appear in the Sermon of the Preachers. As the church was the only place to get political information, more and more people started to gather. This helped spread information about the injustices that were occurring in the state. The gathering of people after the peace prayers, and the spread of information, spurred the formation of spontaneous demonstrations. Topic see also Uprising of 1953 in East Germany Alexanderplatz Demonstration Revolutions of 1989 Peaceful Revolution History of the German Democratic Republic Topic Literature Wolfgang Schneider et al., HRSG, Leipziger Demontagebuch. Demo, Montag, Tagebusch, Demontage, Leipzig, Weimar, Gustav Kiepenheuer 1990 Norbert Eber, Keine Gewalt. Der Friedliche Weg zur Demokratie, eine Chronologie in Bildern, Berlin, Verbum 1990 Jetzt oder nicht, Demokratie. Leipziger Herbst 1989, Leipzig, C. Bertelsmann Verlag 1989 Eckhard Kuhn, Der Tag der Entscheidung. Leipzig, 9. October 1989, Berlin, Ulstein 1992 Karl C. Z. O. K., Nikolai Kirsch, Offen für alle. Eine Gemeinde im Zentrum der Wendy, Leipzig, Evangelische Verlagsanstalt 1999 Tobias Hollitzer, Der Friedliche Verlauf Day 9. October 1989 in Leipzig, Kapitulation oder Reformbereitschaft? Vorgeschichte, Verlauf und Nachwirkung, in, Gunther Heidmann, Gunther Mai und Werner Müller, HRSG, Revolution und Transformation in der DDR 1989-90, Berlin, Dunker & Humblot 1999, S247-288 Martin Jankowski, Robert Oder das Verschwinden einer Himmelsrichtung. Roman. München, via Verbus, 1999, ISBN 3-933902-03-7 Thomas Cutler, Jean Kurt Roeder HRSG, Die Wendy in Plauen, Plauen, Vatlandischer Heimatverlag Newport Plauen 1991 Martin Jankowski, Der Tag, Der Deutschland Veranderte 9. October 1989. Evangelische Verlagsanstalt, Leipzig 2007, ISBN 978-3-374-02506-0 Schmemann, Serge, Upheaval in the East, Leipzig Marchers Tiptoe Around Reunification New York Times, December 19, 1989. References External links Chronik und Zitzugenbericht The Monday Walks of Leipzig – Visualization of the Demonstrations